Well, welcome back to our How to Drywall series. We're getting near the end. We're at the how to do the sanding stage. And you know, a lot of people think, why talk about how to sand? You know, you just sand and it makes a lot of mess. Nobody wants to do it. But there are a few tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you today that'll make your life a lot easier. One thing you need to know in a basement, whether it's in the wintertime or summertime, your HVAC system is operating. So we need to control the dust. Whether it has a fresh air intake on the furnace or it's high efficiency and it uses the cold air return on the wall, either way, spreading this dust through the home is disastrous. It's such a fine powder that even if only 10% of what you sand goes airborne, it's gonna be all through the house and the entire house needs to be clean. So the way that we accomplish this, to create negative air and make this room kind of like a vacuum, is we have a fan with an exhaust ducting running out the window. And what's happening is because it's sealed off, the fresh air from out here is being pulled through this hole, picking up the dust and getting sucked out through the fan. This guarantees that all the dust that's generated in this room is leaving the whole structure. We're not just maintaining it or containing it in a room. This is what we call negative air. You can see how the flap from this plastic is pulled inside. We have to have fresh air intake. It also assists in the camera work. Max is gonna come in and show you the system now. But before we do that, I guess we gotta get rid of this door. We'll put that on again later. All right, so this fan is a three-speed fan, and it's not really rocket science. What we do is we cut up, shut up the door with plastic and create this little area where we're pushing air out of the room faster than it's coming in. Now, it's simple to set up. We don't have anything elaborate going on here. We just have this ductwork kind of taped to the glass outside the window. There's fresh air coming in the room, but we're pushing out more square feet than this window can bring back in. So the way we test to see if we have negative air pressure is really simple. We simply cut a happy face smile in the plastic door, and if it's not flapping in and sucking into the room, we just turn the fan up to the next speed. Mission accomplished. So that's all we have to do. In this case, keep a small hole, keep the fan speed down. This allows us to work in fresh air and have all of the dust out of the building. Nice and simple. So first step before you start sanding, you want to contain the dust in your environment. I think one of the reasons there's no sanding videos on the internet is because people don't want to get their camera equipment <laughs> disgustingly dirty. So we're going to show you real quick what we've got is a plastic wall containing the room and we have our exhaust fan and our ductwork going out the window. Now these types of fans are available for rent at their building store. The ducting is a little harder to find. You got to go basically to like a fire restoration supplier. Um, but I use this on a regular basis on my job site. So if you're a contractor, I highly recommend this. Your fans are going to need some maintenance on a regular basis to clean the, the, the fins off. But the duct work, you buy one box, it'll last you about a year. And it just, what you do is you create negative pressure in this room. So I'm forcing air out the window and I'm going to draw all the air that's clean from the house into my workspace. And that negative pressure, is like a vacuum, it collects the dust and shoots it out of the room. So I don't even need a mask. Okay, so I thought I'd go through a couple of details before we turn the fan on. It's a little loud. So when it comes to sanding, you really only need two primary tools. One is a sanding block. I like to use the angled brush because so I like to use the angled sponge because this corner here is fabulous for going into the corners. If it's all square, you'll find yourself putting grooves in the opposite side of the mud. So you could do this. If this is a small space you're doing, you could probably use one of these sponges. It'll do a bathroom all by itself. No need for anything else. Small space, you know, six or seven bucks, in and done. But if you're doing a large space, like a basement or a bedroom, you're gonna need something bigger. And we've all seen the sanding poles. Uh, those rectangular heads are difficult and they tend to flip over all the time. And it takes a little bit of getting used to to be really good at it. And the last thing you want when you're sanding is to have the head flip over, put a huge chunk in your wall, and then you're right back to mudding again. So I recommend the Radius 360 system. These are awesome. They have detachable heads, so you can change it out and put a smaller triangle pad on here. But these things are wonderful. It's just a Velcro system, has a pad. When you're getting a little bit worn, you can throw them away, stick a new one on there. Good to go, 150 grit on that paper. I think you can get them in 120 as well. Uh, I like the 150 for sanding my mud. You can use this at 120 for sanding between coats on your paint. That's just a free tip for you. So before we get started, again, if you don't have a negative air system, use a mask, okay? This stuff can be pretty dangerous, especially if you're exposed to it over a lot of time. But for me, I don't care. I'm going negative air. I'm gonna demonstrate what you have to do. So let's get the fan on. 
You notice in our taping video, when we're doing our mud joint, we're not trying to put it on real thick and then sand a whole lot off. We're trying to feather it out. We add water to our mud to thin it down, so we don't have a whole lot of sanding to do. So really all we gotta do is get our pad on there, and we're not trying to remove all of the mud, we're just trying to remove the ridge. You see just a little bit of dust? Just a couple of passes, and you'll see that it's feathered in. Kind of like a, one of those summer days, there's just a little bit of cloud in the air. There's no distinctive ridge here. And that's really the look we're going for. Once the ridge is done, we'll do the other ridge. You can see how easy this is to run around. It won't flip over on you. Now I'm happy with that. So all that's left is the area in the middle. We're not trying to remove the mud because we've already put it on really thin and really hard. What we're trying to do is change the texture of the mud so that it's the same as the wallboard, okay? This is the key. If you don't change the texture, when you paint, you'll see the difference in texture and it'll be obvious. So what we're gonna do, just a little bit of a light sand over the board, that's it. Now when you're done, you can't visually inspect your mud. Use your hand. If this all feels the same, you're good. If you see, feel any rough spots, oh, that's where you're gonna know. Give it a little bit more of attention. So, that's the basic gist of how to use the Radius 360. Some things you have to use the sponge for. It's especially corners. So before you do your corners, you're gonna find that when you're taping, you're gonna have little chunks here and there. Just go around, clean out your corners, make sure that all the ridges and little bits of mud are knocked off your wall. Use your four inch knife for that. You don't want to have your sponge going into big chunks of mud because it will tick the corners out and it'll make it expire prematurely. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to feather out the edge, okay? Putting pressure on the inside so we're not gouging here. And then I'm going to clean the corner by opening the sponge five degrees, okay? I don't want to go like this because it, that big 10 inch piece of sponge, if I run it down in the corner, it's gonna groove it all out and it'll look horrible. So you just want a little bit of contact in the corner. Again, just changing the texture. Don't sand all of the dents out. Go back with your prime tech and fill the dents in. That's the key to sanding, less is more. Get rid of the ridges and then walk away. Resist the temptation to sand and sand and sand until everything is smooth because it won't be smooth, it'll just look smooth. You'll spend all day in this room instead of 30 or 40 minutes that this room would take. Do the other corner. Again, five degrees, just a little bit. Feather in the edge. And then just hit all of your screw holes. Make sure that you don't leave any ridges because when you paint, that it will be noticeable. And there we go. Now, double check, make sure your edges are good. That is all you need to know when it comes to sanding. Now in here we have some imperfections, but again, the ridges are gone. When I come back after priming, we'll fill that in with the mud in order to prime check, and then this wall will be perfect. The only other thing you need to know is when you're going around light switches and boxes and plugs, try to be careful. You don't go like this over and over and over and over again to get rid of that ridge, and then this way, because what you're going to do is create scratch lines that'll never go away. Okay, go on an angle. 45 degrees off the corner and you will not have the scratch lines. Then you can just give it a bit of a touch up in the middle if you need it. Perfect every time. That's all you need to know. The only other thing we need to know actually is when you're done sanding is how to clean up. If you're in a small room, you can lay down a sheet of plastic. Most of the dust will land on the plastic. You gently pull the corners together, throw it in a garbage bag. When you're done, I like to use Sweeping compound. This stuff is brilliant. It's been designed and used in industry for a lot of years. You can just eat the dust up. Okay? Look at that. That's how I clean up my sanding dust. You can grab your dustpan, throw that in a bag, and your mess is all taken care of. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos by all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.